Okay. I have a word of prayer and we'll get into our lesson this morning. Uh, Father, Lord, I pray now that you'd give me the gift of teaching. We need to teach now, Father. You said to commit thou to faithful men who should be able to teach others also. It's required of a bishop to be able to teach. So, Father, I pray that that gift of teaching and the anointing for teaching would be here present with us now for the next few minutes. In thy name we pray, amen. All right, now, if you'll turn the book of, uh, the book of uh, Revelation, chapter number 13, we're going to be making reference to this chapter a good bit in, uh, in our study. And it says in verse 16, He causeth all those small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. And it's, it has been fashionable, it's been a fad for a lot of groups, especially music groups, to identify themselves with the number 666. Whether they fully understand what they're doing or not is, uh, is an issue between them and God, but for some strange reason they like to associate themselves with that number. I want to distance myself as far as I can Amen. from that number. Amen. I understand what that number represents. I want to read a quote for you. I want you to listen carefully to this. Christians will not immediately need to renounce their faith in God simply on the basis of the reception of this new unexpected information of a religious character from extraterrestrial civilizations. However, once the religious content originating from outside the earth has been verified, they will have to conduct a, pre, a re-reading of the gospel inclusive of the new data. In plainer words, uh, to put it in simple terminology, when we find out what the aliens have to say, we're going to have to readjust what we believe. And who quoted the, and who said this? Vatican astronomer, eminent theologian, and full professor of fundamental theology at the Pontificia Universia uh, della Santa Croce in Rome, connected with the Opus Dei, Father Giuseppe Tanzelli Nitti. All right, now what's that mean, preacher? That means that they're laying the groundwork for the deception, and the deception is on its way. Now I want to introduce you to a couple of things this morning that's only been mentioned in passing, and I'm going to read an article by Jennifer Reynolds. This was published 5-2015, so you see how current it is. Very current. This thing's not been out more than uh, uh, two weeks. This is Jennifer Reynolds. And uh, I'll just read the article for you. And you listen carefully to what I'm reading. This article addresses the coming rapture. You have seven Hebrew months to be sealed and saved from the hour of destruction to come upon the earth. Pray that you will be found worthy. Now she qualifies that statement on the last page, and I'll read that for you. In other words, what you just read is someone who set a date. Maybe a specific day, but they did set a date. Now here's what she says on the last page. Only God knows when the end is to come, but he has historically warned his people as he did Moses before the flood and Lot who escaped Sodom and Gomorrah. So humble yourselves before God and earnestly pray that you will be found worthy to escape. Jennifer Reynolds. Now that's a disclaimer. What she's trying to say is that the weight of the evidence of what's happening, and I'm going to deal with that this morning, points to September of this year as a very probable date for the rapture of the church of God. Let me say at the very beginning, before I get any further into this, I am not setting dates, nor do I agree with anyone who says that the rapture is going to take place in September. No. But I am going to give you this information because it's important. The reason it's important is because many of the things that she covers in here are real and they're happening. Now you understand that we live in a deceptive age. We live in a time of deception, great deception, unbelievable. Since my few years on this earth, I have never seen a period of time that is as deceptive as it is today. I have never known a generation of people that are as gullible as this generation today. 
And I've never known a generation of people that are as ignorant of the Bible as this generation of today. The generation of today is accustomed to being spoon fed. We call them low information voters. For example, they did a survey the other day and they asked people, they said, how do you feel about Hillary Clinton and Jackie Onassis running together uh, for the presidency? <laughs> now, I know you're laughing. The reason you should, you should laugh. Yeah. I mean, if you haven't had your head in the sand for all your lifetime, you understand that Jackie Onassis, it was John F. Kennedy's wife, got the name Onassis by marrying a, a Greek shipping magnate, Aristotle Onassis, and she has passed on. Right. These people didn't know that. And they're going to go to the polls and they're going to vote. Yeah. Now, I believe what this does is give, it gives a viable survey. It is a measuring stick of what's going on out here in the community for the elite to find out how far they've dumbed them down. And they're finding that out. Uh, they do it by surveys. They do it by other means. And they're observing and they're watching what's happening. Folks, people are ignorant. We're all ignorant, yes. But these people are, uh, it's appalling at the ignorance that you have to deal with. Now listen carefully to what this woman has to say. She is not ignorant. This article addresses the coming rapture. Well, now this is interesting. The Russian meteor of February the 15th, 2013 exploded at about 9.23 or 9.24 AM. Give or take a minute, depending on the clock. How many of you remember the meteor? People were screaming when this thing came into the, in, uh, into the atmosphere. The sonic boom was felt moments later at about 926 to 928 AM. It has been suggested that something big will occur on September the 23rd or 24th of 2015 Specifically, that the Earth will be hit by an asteroid on this date. All right, now just put that in the back of your mind. The date, 24 September 2015, is significant. It is the day after the Jewish Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, that begins at sunset on September the 22nd, 2015, and ends the evening of September the 23rd. Yom Kippur occurs during the seventh month, which is the sabbatical month. This specific Yom Kippur is the culmination of seven sabbatical years. Every <coughs> seventh year is a sabbatical year, a Shemitah or Shemitah. And every sabbatical 49th years ends a cycle of time. So not only is September the 23rd during a seventh sabbatical year, seven sets of seven, but following it is the year of Jubilee that only occurs once every 50th year. So the end of this Yom Kippur brings the year of Jubilee. The decree to perform Yom Kippur is found in Leviticus. Listen carefully. What makes this particular Yom Kippur and following Jubilee even more significant is two things. First, Yom Kippur of September the 23rd falls within a series of four blood moons with a full solar eclipse in between falling on the Jewish New Year month called Nisan. The full moon marking the beginning of the new year will block out the sun on Nisan 1, the Jewish new year. All four blood moons, called a tetrad, land on high Jewish holy days. We have a graphic here that says 415, 2014, a blood moon was the Passover. 10-8, 2014, a blood moon was the Feast of Tabernacles. 4-4, 4, 4, 2015, was again the Passover. 9-13, 2015, which is yet to come, will be Rosh Hashanah. That's the first day of the year. And then 9-28, 2015, 
2015 will be the Feast of Tabernacles. So you have four blood moons in a row with a, with a darkening of the sun right smack in the middle of it. And she quotes Acts 2.20 where the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon into blood. Secondly, what sets this jubilee apart is that it is the first jubilee since the restoration of Jerusalem to Israel. That's a big deal. That is important. June the 7th, 1967, Jerusalem was captured. When the Jews took it from the Jordanians, they went to the Wailing Wall, they prayed, there's photographs taken back then, they were weeping, the rabbis were weeping. The ancient city had now come back to the ancient people. It came to its rightful owners. Secondly, what this jubilee apart is, that is the first jubilee since the restoration of Jerusalem to Israel. When Moses led the people of Israel out of Egypt, he told them that counting for the year of jubilee would begin when they entered the promised land, Jerusalem. But scriptures teach that the year of jubilee applies only when Israel resides in Jerusalem. Now listen to this. These are, these are remarkable coincidences. There have been seven other blood moon tetrads. Well, you've got four. Since the, uh, five rather, since the crucifixion of Christ. Surprising, seven of them, since the crucifixion of Christ. Seven of them in, in 2,000 years. You've had seven. Surprisingly, the last such series, which was the seventh series, surrounded Israel's recapture of Jerusalem and the temple on June the 7th, 1967, during what is called the Six-Day War. That is remarkable. Now listen to Sir Isaac Newton. This is a British philosopher, astronomer, physicist, scientist, mathematician. Sir Isaac Newton lived from 1643 to 1727. He's a Christian and undoubtedly a brilliant man. Sir Isaac Newton, the brilliant English philosopher, astronomer, so forth and so on, was very astute in Bible prophecy and deciphered that in the book of Daniel 9.25, where it states that from the time Jerusalem is returned to Israel and to the coming of the Messiah is 49 sabbatical years. So, starting at June the 7th, 1967, remember, it counts from the time that they are in Jerusalem. So, starting at June the 7th, 1967, and counting forward 17,640 days using the ancient 360-day calendar, which is scriptural. That's a, that's, a, that's a biblical prophetic calendar. Counting forward using the ancient 360 day year by 49 sabbatical years brings us to September the 23rd, 2015. And Isaac Newton said this in 16, in the 1600s. The day of atonement occurring during this particular sabbatical, particular sabbatical year. Now let's bring it together. She says to recap, Yom Kippur, September the 23rd, 2015, and falling within a sub Sabbath year every seven years, also happens to be a Shemitah year every 49 years, will be followed by a Jubilee every 50th year. This is amazing enough, but it is also the first Jubilee after Jerusalem has been restored to Israel. Jesus is said to return at the end of the age which would be the end of the age of Pisces, the astrological sign of the fish that we have been in for approximately 2,000 years. We are entering the age of Aquarius. Remember, I mentioned that to you last Sunday. The age of Aquarius, the musical hair, the fifth dimension, the astrological sign of the Son of Man, a divine man. So this is just one reason why many are feeling that the rapture and appearance of Messiah is fast upon us. A lot of things are pointing in that direction. A lot of these things appear to be very plausible. A lot of things. On further note, 
pointing a, fu a further note pointing to September the 23rd, 15 as being highly significant of the following. Not only did the Russian meteor explode at approximately 9.23 a.m., apparently the train in Philadelphia exploded at 9.23 also. To add to this peculiarity is that Pope Francis, the prophesied last pope, you know, Petrus Romanus, Tom Horn, the prophecy of St. Malachi that's, what, eight, nine hundred years old, is coming to Philadelphia in September of 2015. Pope Francis is coming to Philadelphia in 2000, September, 2000, September 2015. He will give Mass in Philadelphia on September the 27th, the day before the final fourth supermoon, super blood moon. The Church of Philadelphia is spoken in Revelation. She quotes the scripture. Then we go further on down. Now listen carefully to some of this because some of this you've been asking questions about. Let's address even more questionable issues surrounding September the 22nd to the 24th, 2015. Number one. Before performing Mass in Philadelphia on September the 27th, 2015, the Pope is to speak before Congress, a never-before event. Now think about that. The Pope is going to speak before the Congress on September the 24th, 2015, within 24 hours of the Day of Atonement on the 23rd. His visit coincides with the blood moons. This Pope is a Jesuit Pope. And if you've kept up with anything he has to say, and we'll be covering some of the material today and into the future, you understand that he's a very highly controversial pope. A lot of people support him. A lot don't. A lot of Roman Catholics are turning against this pope, and they have their reasons. Number two, the French foreign minister had said that we had 500 days to prevent climate chaos counting 500 days from the day he said this lands on September the 23rd, 2015. Listen to this. How many of you have heard of Jade Helm? How many has never heard of it? All right, a lot of you haven't. Okay. I hadn't heard of it until just a few days ago. Jade Helm is a series of military exercises which includes cooperation between multiple government agencies such as CIA, NSA, Department of Homeland Security, and on and on. It begins on July the 15th and is supposed to be wrapped up by the end of September 2015. This is going to be an annual event. The logo for Jade Helm reads, Mastering the Human Domain and has a wooden shoe that originated in the Netherlands. The Netherlands lie below sea level and wooden shoes protected the feet from mud. The region below the galactic plane was considered the galactic sea because it is a dark and foreboding region of the heavens. The arrows and sword military is actually a crossing if you look down at it from a 45 degree angle. Looks like this. You can see these notes when I get done. You can see this logo. For us today, jade means the color green. But in the days past, it meant an adulterous woman, a hussy. For whatever this logo is meant to mean in the natural, in the spiritual it reads, martial law under a harlot, the woman who rides the beast to enslave mankind in the land below the galactic plain. But for God's chosen people, the slaves are freed. Number four, a bizarre Taco Bell commercial. <laughs> Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. I think it's a, in the, in the, a bizarre Taco Bell commercial. It is accompanied by a song that says, Wake me up when September ends. And the date 923 is shown on a countdown clock. Now this is according to Jennifer Reynolds.
You can Google her name and do further research on this if you please. These notes will be made available for you. Anything I've got in here can be made available for you. I'm not original to this. I'm simply reading what she says. It begins with a post. Now, we're, go we're going back to the Taco Bell commercial. Now, we're selling beans and, and tacos and stuff, all right? Now, think about it a minute. Think about, think about beans, tacos, and, and, and whatever, and, and, and connecting that with what I'm about to read to you. Wake me up when September ends, 923 is shown on a countdown clock. It begins with a post-apocalyptic scene and shows a couple jumping down from a wall and escaping through an oval doorway into another dimension or heaven. In the distance, you see a beautiful city, the New Jerusalem. They are then tossed a crunch wrap, Pentagon-shaped Star of David reference. It is worth looking it is worth looking up the sacred meaning behind the pentagram as it is very rich in symbolism i'll say it is you see this shape being drawn elsewhere in the commercial with the star of david inside recall biblical references to opening of doors and doorways the doorway is actually the activated pineal gland when it is activated one is said to be awakened and sees intuitively and spiritually now, let me give you a warning on what you just heard her say. How many of you remember me talking about chakras in the body? The seven chakras. Each one is associated with spiritual power, enlightenment, and it also has a color that relates to it. And the seventh chakra is at the top of the head, crown of the head, and that's where the serpent, the, the kundalini serpent comes up. You say, well, that's just a bunch of occult junk. Well, it may be as far as you're concerned, but to these people, it has enormous power. You would not believe the power that can be unleashed with kundalini yoga. And the pineal gland in the occult world is the third eye. It's the ability to see beyond what the physical eyes can see and perceive and behold with that third eye. Have you ever seen the old horror movies of the Cyclops who had the one eye in the center. This is what we're leading up to. Now, uh, remember, this is, these are not my words. I'm reading what this woman has to say. And she's talking about the, uh, way, the, uh, the, uh, the intuitively and spiritually. Now, here at number five, how many has ever heard of Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, author of The Harbinger? He explains how September the 15th ties in with Jewish sabbatical years and holds important biblical significance for America and the world. He warns that September 2015 brings financial and economic collapse. Number six. It is known that Hollywood, believed by some to be under control of the Illuminati, has a habit of giving the public hints of what is to come. The YouTube channeler who goes by the handle Renee M does a great job compiling references in movies and songs that point to September 15th, September 2015 as bringing a highly significant event. And then she lists some must-see videos. The man in the dark robe standing on the pier represents the prophet from Rabbi Jonathan Kahn's book, The Harbinger. At marker 28 and 29, a comet flies from right to left. Number seven, AARP. How many of you are 50 or 55? How, what was it they sent it to me? 50? Time to join up with the old folks home when I was 50. AARP admits to a commercial where playing in the background on the television is a declaration of martial law. The jade color of green is prominent and a ship's helm is displayed. That's remarkable. Shall we recap what we have so far? 
A Russian meteor, September 15, 2013, explodes at 923. Train wreck, Philadelphia, 923. September the 24th, Pope Francis, last pope. This is the last pope according to what Tom Horn said in Petrus Romanus, quoting the prophecy of Malachi. September the 24th, Pope Francis, the last pope, will speak before Congress, a historical event. Pope Francis will perform Mass in Philadelphia September the 27th, 2015. The Liberty Bell is located in Philadelphia and quotes Leviticus, which addresses the year of Jubilee. In Revelation, the Church of Philadelphia escapes tribulation to come under the earth, to come upon the earth. Sir Isaac Newton's prediction of 70 weeks of Sabbaths until the return of the Messiah calculates to the date of September the 23rd, 2015. French Foreign Minister gave 500 days to avoid climate chaos, a date that brings us to September the 23rd. Jade Helm will be well in place by September the 23rd. Hollywood has once again given us hints of a dire future event in movies, commercial, and music. This one occurring on September the 23rd, 2015. So what's all that mean, preacher? That means that there's a lot of things happening. A lot of stuff's happening. Does that mean Christ is coming back in September? No, we don't know when he's coming back. Yes, sir. I, took, uh, I got on the computer the other day and I typed in CERNs and I found the exact date that they started CERNs 50 years ago, uh -huh. 60 years ago. And it was 9-29-1954 when it was, the, you know, the breaking of the ground. And that was, a, that was on Yom Kippur, or Rosh Hashanah. Okay, if you take the 1954 and the 29 and the 9, it brings you up to 2012, the day that the, the year that they discovered the uh, Boston uh, yeah, particle. But everything about this thing is centered around. Right, Jewish feast days, Jewish holy days that go back uh, thousands of years. But it's kind of interesting how, there's, how, how all those numbers uh, are, you know, come right. all the same. Right. Now, right, let me read something for you this morning. Uh, how many of you are aware of the fact that a pope has resigned, first time this has happened in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years? A pope has resigned, uh, another pope has taken his place. A Benedictine, I think it was a Benedictine order. His name was Benedict. I'm not sure of his order. He was German. His name was Ratzinger. He was Pope Benedict. He resigned, and Pope uh, Francis took his place. All right. Now, I'm going to read something about this. I'm going to read you something that this Pope that resigned said. This is what he said, and we may be able to put things together. Former Pope Benedict XVI spread consternation in the Catholic world this morning and this morning is March the 30th, 2014. He spread consternation in the Catholic world this morning as he claimed that a group of Jesuits had infiltrated the Vatican and were pushing what he called, pursuing what he called an alien agenda. And then in a press conference rebroadcast live on FM, German Catholic radio station, so forth and so on, the Pope uh, uh, gets into, the, uh, into what he's talking about, the body of it. A sinister group of members of the Vatican are pushing on for the search for extraterrestrial life. Now here's a quote from Pope Francis. This Pope Francis says, it is the devil that is keeping evangelicals and Catholics from forming a one world super church. Pope Francis has said that it is the devil himself who keeps evangelicals, Catholics, and Christians from other denominations divided and rejected the notion that it's heretical to believe that all Christians are one. Division is the work of the father of lies, the father of discord, says Pope Francis. Who does, who does everything to keep us divided. Francis said in a video message to a gathering sponsored by John 17 Movement, according to Catholic Herald, I feel like saying something that may sound controversial or even heretical, perhaps. He added. Now let's put two and two together. 
If this Pope Benedict says that these Jesuits had infiltrated the Vatican, Malachi Martin was a Jesuit. And Malachi Martin said that Satan was in the sanctuary of the Vatican. And somebody killed him. They had a priest over there that went on Italian television and he was talking about how that aliens are already here. They're already here. They're here now. He wound up dying. Another one that was preaching the same message wound up with his throat cut from ear to ear. Could it be that this Pope was pushed out, forced out, so that this Jesuit Pope could come in and begin to move with the agenda that these Jesuits are instituting the Vatican. They are bringing an alien savior into this world. This is what that telescope on top of Mount Graham out there in Arizona, part of it's called Lucifer. They have these high level astronomers in the Catholic Church that are looking off into the heavens. They say something is on its way. Could it be that this Pope Francis will announce to the world something when he stands in front of the Congress of the United States in just a few months? Could it be that these dates all coincide and bring together something for the world that's asleep right now, especially the church, sleep, and the church doesn't want to hear it? They don't want to hear it. What they want to do, they want to come to church, they want to feel good, they want to, be, they want, they want their, they want to feel good, they don't want to go out and vote for a baby killer. Now that's fact. That's the real world you live in. That's the world you live in. The people you rub shoulders with in the church house that sing in the choir and sing, oh, how I love Jesus, will walk into a polling booth and vote for a baby murderer in a heartbeat. And they think that's compatible. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that makes sense, doesn't it? It does make sense. And uh, in the past, some pope, one pope went in, he was only in there 30 days, I think, a few years ago, and he was gone. And uh, I'm not here to, this morning to try to defend the Catholic Church. Believe me, if anybody's ever preached about the problems of the Catholic Church, I have. But I am saying this. There probably are believers in the Catholic Church who are true believers in Christ, and the fact of the matter is, the more light you get, the more accountable you are. And if you're truly born again, and you're in the Roman Catholic Church, it shouldn't take too long for you to realize you're in the wrong place. Yeah, that's right. And you need to be moving out of there. Yeah. But that's another issue altogether. The fact of the matter is that we're dealing with enormous deception. Now you look at CERN over here. Here they are, Belducci talks about, uh, here we, we're opening a door, we're opening a gateway, we're opening an opening a black hole, and we don't know what's coming through it, and we don't know what's going into it. And we've got this uh, Shiva dancing the, uh, what's the, what's the, I forget what that thing's called, the, the Hadetha, the, the Hashira, some kind of a name for the dance. The dance of destruction where he destroys, but the process of destroying is to recreate. Because uh, you've got Brahma and you've got Vishnu. Brahma's the creator, Vishnu's the sustainer, and uh, and uh, 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 well, my mind's going blank. Who's the one dancing inside the circle? Shiva. Shiva's dancing in the circle. This is, this is, this is part of the panoply of Hindu gods. And these are the tribe, the trinity of the Hebrew, uh, Hindu gods. Now, I was going to mention, to, and I'll probably, I need to go ahead and do this while I'm at it this morning, uh, because this fits. Around 1 a.m. on Sunday, April 26th, Two doctoral students at Louisiana State University were mysteriously found dead at the bottom of a local swimming pool. 28-year-old Ishita Mayati and 25-year-old Anton Joe were with the school's physics and astronomy department with Mayati studying theoretical astrophysics while Anton was a third-year student studying theoretical gravity. 
Maity was an author of one of the journals, New Astronomy's most popular recent papers entitled, Black Hole Spin Dependence of General Relativistic Multitransonic Accretion uh, Close to the Event Horizon. That means something to somebody. Joe's most recent paper was called, Kantowski Sock Space-Time in Loop Quantum Cosmology Bounds on Expansion and Shear Scalars and the Viability of Quantization Prescriptions. That means something. Over a year ago, Joe uploaded a paper to academia, so forth and so on. The paper was written for the European Organization for Nuclear Research, also known as CERN. They say that these two students, graduate students, that were found dead at the bottom of the swimming pool were brilliant. Brilliant. And they were connected with CERN. It's almost, it's almost like something is going on at CERN and as long as you stay within the box and as long as you speak the party line, you're okay. But if you dare step out of that, you're in trouble. And they'll kill you in a heartbeat. In other words, whatever's going on at CERN is under control and it's not going to be released until the time to release it. Timing's very important. How many's ever heard of Steve Quayle? All right, good. Many of you have. SteveQuayle.com has a, has a very good website. Uh, each day he will post a bunch of news articles and that relate a lot of times to the, to the second coming of Christ, to the apostasy of the church, news like Jade Helm, news that relates to CERN, and all kinds of things. He has a section on the right-hand side of his webpage that has, uh, it's, it's called uh, scientists, uh, uh, dead scientist, something like that. He has a list of all of the scientists that have died mysteriously in the last few years. I didn't count them. If you want to read their names and look at this, you're welcome to. After the service today, it's full of it. We're talking about PhDs with IQs of 160, 70, 80. We're talking about brilliant people all coming up dead. Scientists. Why? What's going on? There's something happening. Yes, sir. Well, that uh, plane that shot over uh, Ukraine, it was full of uh, The one that was shot down? Uh, I don't remember the number 70. Okay. Uh, I've read articles from Horn that this is going to be the 70th Jubilee. Okay. So there's 70 Jubilees, or there's 70 Sabbaths in a year that the Jews, you know, they dedicate Sabbaths. That's how Jesus Christ died on Wednesday and he was buried Thursday and, or that evening and then he rose again on Sunday. They dedicate so many days to, for Sabbath during the uh, feast days. But anyway, it's not coincidental. This is the 70th Sabbath, 70th Jubilee. I mean, it's, it's got seven written all over it. Uh, now, when you hear this stuff like I've given out this morning, a lot of people, they don't want to hear this. It upsets them. It bothers them. They like to remain with the low information voter. <laughs> you know, you tell them, uh, uh, you tell them, Jackie Onassis is going to run with uh, with uh, Kent with uh, with what's her name for president. You know, and they don't know the difference. How hard would it be for somebody like that to be deceived, sucked right into this, be brought into it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. On all these cartoons. Right. But they're dead. they're they're trying to indoctrinate your children to what's coming. Yeah, what it is, it's it's very simple, you know. Uh you you uh, you become jaded to it, you become part of your culture. 
And that's what's happening with the kids today. The kids today don't know anything. They play with the occult and, and all that. And that J is, is, is connected to ego. And uh, if, you, if you notice all these people, like when the uh, Ebola broke out, everybody was wearing green. It's this J, this green collar, is being pushed on your kids, uh, Earth Day, and all this other stuff. It's all. Well, yes, ma'am. Right. She didn't know how to use the key to open the door. Right. Yeah, I've read about that. Yeah. Well, that's sad. That shows that it shows that somebody's failing somewhere. No. No, it's not funny because if you're, you know, you're handicapped the rest of your life. I mean, if, you're, if you've gone through 12 years of school and you're coming out with a high school diploma and you don't know any better than that, that's bad. Somebody's, somebody failed you. And that's sad. Uh, okay. We have, uh, we'll pick it up again next week and start making now. We're going to make some connections. I've laid a lot of groundwork for you. You've heard a lot of stuff in here. We're going to make some connections next week. And uh, some things are going to begin to unfold. One more time, I am not setting a date for the second advent. I do not know when the Lord Jesus is coming back. All of this is uh, conjecture. This is just uh, somebody's idea. But a lot of things are coming together. A lot of things make sense. It's worth looking at. What we should be as aware of, 23rd September. You're, you're not saying a scientist that's a Christian. You're talking about a Christian scientist that Mary Baker, Patterson, Glover, Eddie started. Okay, there's a big difference between the two. Well, this guy was, he was right on the money. He was saying exactly what you were saying. Uh, oh, you're talking about a scientist that's a Christian? A Christian Okay. Yeah. He's been banned from this country and everything else. And okay. Been, okay. Because the so-called Christian science movement denies the reality of sin. They live in la-la land. Yeah, okay. All right. Brother Crane, will you dismiss us?